Hi, my name is Neil Newman, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the Mays Cancer Center, and today I'm going to discuss the role of radiation in colorectal cancer. Radiation is um, just a little bit of light, and that's what's depicted in these pictures. We use open face machines, and we are uh, able to take verification images of the patients to make sure that we are precisely on target. And when we feel that everything is aligned to how we planned the treatment, we then will fire the x-rays. Just like a diagnostic scan, you cannot feel nor see the radiation, even though it's having a very precise and very uh, efficacious um, action. So what is radiation? And real briefly, my definition is that we're harnessing technology to create particles which move at the speed of light, which is the fastest speed that anything in the universe can move to target cancer cells. The machine on the previous slide, the linear accelerator, creates these uh, x-rays, and then these x-rays um, damage and essentially rip apart the cancer DNA. Now, when these cancer cells try to replicate, they're corrupted and then they die in the process. Furthermore, we now know that radiation releases antigens displayed in these little orange dots in this pictograph, um, which then alert your immune system to the cancer and, and helps allow your immune system to attack it and cause a further um, immunogenic reaction. Over here uh, is displayed the four steps of radiation planning. So step one is we just take a normal CAT scan and we use devices for immobilization. We then take the pictures of this CAT scan and we move on to step two, which is contouring. During contouring, a radiation oncologist such as myself precisely defines the anatomic targets of where we want the radiation to go and where we do not want the radiation to go. Essentially just hitting the bad stuff and avoiding the good stuff. We do this in a way um, to how a surgeon uh, can operate. Um, although uh, during this process, I can delete and redraw my approach. Step three is we work with a team of physicists and dosimetrists that help us plan um, how to get uh, the precise amount of radiation um, to the target. I say that every patient is different and we are now precise to fit treatments to patients' bodies and to their specific tumors, calling this essentially a targeted therapy. Then number four, after we've planned and we've done quality assurance that um, on a phantom that everything we're planning to give is being given, uh, we set the patient up on the machine and then we administer the treatment. In general, we have two main roles, both in the local setting and in the distance setting. For local disease, primarily more rectal cancer, our goal is to uh, give radiation to the tumor um, to shrink the tumor down. This has uh, almost a three-pronged effect. Number one, um, if the patient does move on to surgery, we know that this reduces, it from, uh, reduces the odds of this coming back. Furthermore, if the rectal tumor is near the anal sphincter muscles that would require a surgery to get a permanent colostomy back, we know that radiation can shrink it down to the point that you can um, avoid that colostomy bag surgery and attach the colon to the anus to have a normal uh, bowel movement quality of life. Lastly, we now know um, that with high enough doses of radiation, we are now getting patients that the tumor totally disappears and we may be able to avoid surgery altogether for local rectal cancer. Over here on the right is, um, uh, again, uh, a radiation plan that is given to a patient of mine where um, we are basically, uh, this color wash, the hot red dose is targeted on the tumor. The blue dose is a lower dose targeted at the lymph nodes to sterilize any cancer that may or may not be there. Um, and then you could see that everywhere um, in front where there is um, no, no color wash is us sculpting away from the bladder and bowel and being able to precisely target the tumor in the lymph nodes. Our next big role in colorectal cancer is when it spreads. It can go to the liver or to the lungs. And this demonstration is a case on when it has spread to the liver. If after multidisciplinary consultation with surgery, uh, if this is inoperable, um, we uh, many times can treat with a high dose of radiation. Um, or if the patient does not want an operation, we can treat with a high dose of radiation to achieve very high rates of local control. 
in this picture here um, is a demonstration of radiation dose to the tumor. And uh, again, showing how we can precisely sculpt um, these uh, red and blue colors onto the tumor. And um, all of this gray is normal liver that we are avoiding. At times, we can work at the we can work with our surgeons where we may radiate a tumor, and they may be able to remove a tumor in a multidisciplinary fashion. On this slide, we you can see that we have some advancing technology. Um, this movie that's being played is showing the liver tumor move up and down as the patient breathes. And at Mays, we have technology to help adjust for this respiratory motion. Um, during the simulation, the step one of the planning process, we measure the way that the patients are able to breathe, and I can track that so that when they come on um, to the treatment machine, um, I can feel comfortable that no matter how the patient breathes, I'm, I'm accurately targeting and hitting uh, the tumor. So in general, um, with these targeted approaches, adjusting for respiratory motion, potentially treating with a breath hold if the patient can handle we're having massively decreased side effects. Um, and in fact, the literature is catching up to this. Usually, we really only see mild diarrhea and fatigue. Many of my patients have told me um, over the past two years that the radiation has been the easiest part of the cancer journey um, in terms of its minimal side effect profile and lack of invasiveness and overall efficacy. Radiation future, we are just continuing to look at uh, different types of equipment to uh, minimize the low dose radiation spill seen in blue here on the right. Techniques such as using MRI guidance, PET scans, um, and even protons can help us achieve um, a sharper dose fall off to target the tumor. That is all I have for today. I hope that that was a helpful introduction to the modalities of radiation therapy. Here at the Mays Cancer Team, we work in a multidisciplinary fashion to help our patients.